Thanks uh, to the McKernans collectively and especially Kevin for the invitation. I missed this event last year and it looked really great. And obviously when you... I'm, I think I'm mic'd up. Is it being turned on now? Can you hear me now? Okay. So to repeat, thanks to the McKernans and Kevin especially for organizing this. It's great. A really nice mix of you know, chemistry, biomedical science, and what I'm going to talk about, which is plants. Um, I changed my title a little bit because we had a paper come out in the last week on uh, terpenes in cannabis, so I won't just talk about cannabinoids and trichomes. Um, but before that, I thought I'd show this slide. This is um, Richard Evan Schultes, who's a, who was a professor in, at Harvard at the Botanical Museum, sort of just across the river, obviously, from here. This is a picture of Richard Evan Schultes in 1972 in Kandahar in Afghanistan, he was investigating the differences between the species of you know, cannabis indica and sativa, or what's purportedly the, those differences. And so it's, you know, it's, I think it's really cool that there's a, there a pioneer of, of cannabis right here in Boston. Um, he's, he passed away in 2001, but was really the father of the field of ethnobotany and, and really got a lot of people excited about medicinal plants and, and psychoactive plants and hallucinogenic plants. Um, even though he was an extremely sort of conservative uh, Harvard faculty member, he went down to the Amazon and used ayahuasca and all this kind of thing. So, and in, in 1972, he quoted someone else to say, the story of marijuana is not yet written. And I think we're still seeing that. We're still writing that story, and, and conferences like this are, are really moving things along. So I'm interested in, in cannabis as a medicinal plant, and, and as others have said this morning, it's really a metabolic factory. It's a, it's a factory for compounds such as, whoops, such as THC and CBD, cannabigerol, other cannabinoids. There's a, you know, potentially 110 or over 100 of, of the cannabinoids. And then terpenes like myrcene and linalool and, and, and beta-caryophylline. Beta and, and together they form this mixture of bioactive metabolites that really produce the effects of the plant that people get when they consume it, either orally or in, in inhaled. So, you know, those effects, of course, are psychoactivity, pain relief, and all the, you know, potentially useful medical properties we see. And then when we look at that plant on a, you know, chemical analysis, and, and the lab that I founded in Vancouver both does genomics, as I'll talk about in this talk, but we, we do a lot of in-depth chemical profiling. This is sort of a, maybe a typical an analytical profile of a, of a, of a cannabis uh, plant. So the, the cannabinoids such as CBDA, the acid form of CBD, and THCA. In this plant, essentially, you know, a sort of one-to-one -one ratio, so what would be called a chemotype two plant. And then we see like CBGA, cannabigerolic acid, and cannabichromatic acid also present in that plant. So the, you know, there's kind of the, uh, although there's 105 cannabinoids, the, the major ones are what, what we see Typically, there's sort of you know, six or eight of the, of the big ones. And then within the, the terpenes, we see monoterpenes, myrcene typically dominates, and then sesquiterpenes, things like beta-caryophylline. And those are all combining in that, that, that mixture. And what my research program has really been doing over the last decade or so is trying to figure out how cannabis makes those compounds. So what are the enzymes? What are the genes for the enzymes that put these complex metabolites together? And the secret of that experimental approach has been the focus on glandular trichomes. So this is a funky picture I took of a, of a strain called skunk number one when I was a postdoc in Germany around 2000 or 1999, back, you know, that long ago I started working on this plant. We look at those, those female floral tissues, we see the stigmas where this, you know, that receive the pollen as these white hairs, but those crystally kind of structures on the floral tissues are, are trichomes. We look a little bit more closely and we see those stalked trichomes. And then we look even more closely, this is actually, these are hemp trichomes, but hemp is still cannabis after all. You can see that nice stalk, and then a, a secretory disc of cells. These are the cells that are actually making cannabinoids and terpenes, and they secrete them into a kind of a bag, a subcuticular space of goop. And so what we get is the secretory disc cells are, are the, kind of the cellular factories for cannabinoids, and then there's that storage site in that, in that secretory cavity you know, as, as, as consumers, they would talk about, you know, people talk about crystals and, and resin droplets. They're really like a balloon of, of, of chemicals or, or a, a Safeway bag. You know, it's got a sort of a thin, almost plastic, waxy 
skin on it to contain the metabolites in there. And you can open them up just by, you know, poking them or prodding them. So what we did as biochemists and genomicists was say, well, you know, those secretory cell discs are where all the action takes place. That's where the factory is. If we can isolate them and then start probing their biochemistry and specifically looking at what genes are expressed, we can figure out how the metabolites that are produced and then secreted there, cannabinoids and terpenes, are actually produced in the plant. And so that, and that process in the, or I'll go back one slide, shows you what we did was we took female floral tissues of a high THC strain, put it in a, a bead beater, which is a glorified, glorified blender, costs a lot more than your typical blender, knock the stuff apart, the bag of goop opens up, the, the, the discs separate from the top of the stalk, and then you can filter them off and purify them into a relatively pure form. They're kind of a sort of a creamy color. They're not even photosynthetic. And then we can isolate RNA, ribonucleic acid, which is the messenger from the genome through to the protein. It's kind of, it's, it's the active form of, of, of gene expression. So we got RNA and then we started sequencing it. And then we had a gene expression catalog. So that gene expression catalog from the glandular trichomes of high THC cannabis was enriched for cannabinoid pathway enzymes. And the, the reason we knew it was enriched was initially um, we only had one enzyme in the pathway identified. It was done by uh, the Professor Shoyama's group in Kyushu University in Japan around 2000. So THC acid synthase is the last step in the